Knock at the Cabin is the new M. Night Shyamalan film. And no, I'm not going to say his last name all <laughs> fucked up like everybody. Because I think he's like the only like um, foreign name that like it seems to be completely okay to make fun of. <laughs> <laughs> that like everybody does it. Yeah. But I feel like any other name... That was weird like that from, <laughs> from like a different country or something would be like taboo. They'd be like, that's so insensitive. How could you? Yeah. But with him, everyone's just like Shama Lama Ding Dong. <laughs> <laughs> Literally <laughs> that. Yeah. It's just yeah. everyone has accepted that that's his name. I guess. <laughs> so anyways, uh, I actually considered shooting this review in really, really tight close-ups of our face <laughs> the entirety and putting it at, like, different little Dutch angles. <laughs> because 90% of this film, Knock at the Cabin, is filmed this close to the actor's face. It's very, very tight, yeah. Like, 90%. I'm not mm -hmm. exaggerating on this. Okay, I might be exaggerating a little. You are but exaggerating. <laughs> no, not by much. I'm going to go 75% of the movie is in tight close-ups of faces. Yeah, 75%. <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. I get you're trying to be like intimate, but Jesus Christ, this is this is close up. Anyways, okay. So, um I think we've all seen the trailer <laughs> for this movie at this point. <laughs> this this one got marketed a lot. Yes. It um did. in case you missed the trailer, uh this is about a uh family Two gay men. Uh-oh, woke propaganda. This will definitely be seen as woke propaganda. Oh my gosh. There's so lame. no doubt about it. Um, so lame. But anyway, uh, there is a same-sex male couple, mm -hmm. and they have a daughter, and uh, these four people show up to tell them that they have to make a decision or there will be dire consequences. Um, and they come off very culty. And of course, they are struggling with believing what they're telling them. And uh, that's, that's pretty much the film. I mean, they have to make a choice uh, based on whether or not they believe the people who show up at their door. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I will say this. I feel like... There, there's a caveat here to this because you have to market a movie, right? Like it has to be done. Yes. You know, you could just say, you know, M. Night Shyamalan's new movie and make it all super mysterious. Um, they did that with like Howard the Duck back in the day. I'll always remember that when they advertised Howard the Duck, it was like George Lucas and Steven Spielberg's new thing. And it was just like, we were all wondering what the hell it was. McDonald's actually did this. Like, there were, like, big thing, big news coming or whatever. And we were like, what the hell's going to happen? We all thought, like, McDonald's was going to get beer. Because it was, like, <laughs> McDonald's is, go like, getting going adult or something like uh -oh. that. And we were like, what the hell could that mean? It ended up being this burger. I can't even remember what it's called now. But if you guys are my age, you probably remember that. Uh... God, what was that burger? It doesn't matter. <laughs> My point being is they could have went that route. They could have went that route. But they're not going to. They, they that I don't know if that would sell or not. So they had to market this way. They had to market it, right? And basically, like, the only way you could market this is by making the trailer they made, which is just a bench, essentially the setup. And from that trailer, I watched the trailer and I was just like, okay, like, I'm about 99% sure I know exactly what's going to happen in this film. Mm. And I was 100% correct. <laughs> so I saw the trailer and then I saw the movie for the most part. That's not to say the film isn't worth watching or that it's mm. not good. Um, it feels like an extended Twilight Zone episode. Um, I think this, and, and that's true of a lot of Shyamalan's films. And this is why I think that he should have uh, been the guy who um, rebooted the Twilight Zone over mm. Jordan Peele. I think that his films are much more suited to uh, Twilight Zone. But um, I, I, I'll definitely listen to your uh, thoughts and opinions before I go on. Um, yeah, I mean, say? I think that the trailer, we talked about this recently, that it's kind of like 
trailers definitely can do a disservice to a film in a lot of ways. And with this one, it does give you way more information than I feel like you need. Um, mm, but as okay. you said, too, it, it doesn't mean that it's not worth seeing, of course. Um, and I actually, I really enjoyed the film. I think that Shyamalan has a great sense of like suspense building and tone. All of his movies, you know, even if they don't have like some big twist and mystery or whatever, like they definitely have great atmosphere and tone to them. And with this one, you know, I feel like you were joking about all the tight shots, but it really is a movie that's like you're you're trying to put yourself in to the character's shoes mm -hmm. like a hundred percent of the time. And they're faced with really a really, really tough decision to say the least. Literally faced. <laughs> and so I appreciated all the camera work. I thought that the acting from everybody was really solid. I really loved uh, Dave Batista in this. He, I always like seeing him, but I thought that he actually did a really great job in this role. And um, the little girl was adorable. She was super, super cute. And I actually thought her acting was really good too. Uh, I don't know how old the actress is, but she plays an eight-year-old in the movie so i'm assuming she's close to that age and so i was pretty impressed. she's 25 oh god <laughs> <laughs> um but you know i think that we both kind of had like there were some stakes that we wanted to exist in the film that didn't exist um that would have kind of just up the up the level of intensity with everything yeah. um but I, I don't know. I, I enjoyed it. I was, I was engaged the whole time we were watching it, and I had a good time. There's definitely like, I think it's just more of a personal stakes kind of thing, because of what Kaylee was saying. With you know, we wanted there to be more stakes. The film has huge stakes it does. right i mean so <laughs> yes. don't get don't yeah. get us wrong on that the stakes are as high as they possibly yeah. could be um but it's just like confined within that house there's something missing there and i'm sure if you watch enough films you'll figure out what that is mm -hmm. um so yeah at no point did i think um a certain character was ever <laughs> going to get injured in any way, shape, or form. Right. Um, but we also talked about that, like, it is kind of, it fits with the plot, for sure. Like, there's a reason for it. So it's not, like, a totally arbitrary uh, decision to keep that character safe. But... I actually think it would have worked better without her. Oh. Hmm. Right. And, and we can talk spoilers or something after to discuss more about that. But regardless, I, I mean, she brings, she, she has purpose in the film. And I'm not going to say she doesn't. But moving on from that, um, we'll, we'll talk about it in a minute. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm, yeah, I enjoyed the film. I enjoyed the film, but it's exactly what I expected it to be. And that second caveat that I'd kind of you know, um, blow, blew right past, um, is that, you know, with a Shyamalan film, there is this kind of built-in notion that you're going to get some kind of twist out of it, which is unfair, right? And I feel like marketing and, and, and an expectation of a twist is a disservice and unfair to the movie mm -hmm. because neither of those are its fault. Mm -hmm. Shyamalan doesn't have to write a twist. He can write a very straightforward film, which is what he did here. Um, the film also does have a decent amount of handholding that I found to be interesting. And I don't mm -hmm. know if that's a, that was cause this is a film that Shyamalan wrote with two other people and mm -hmm. it is based on a book. <clears throat> But there's like certain things that are said in it that I was like, oh, I would expect that kind of information to be given to us or for us to come up with it on our own dissecting the film later. Mm -hmm. When they kind of say specific motifs and whatnot that I was just like, oh, you're just saying that outright. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I did like that one of the characters is as skeptical mm -hmm. as i would be 
and is pointing out all the obvious things that I would be pointing out. Yeah. Where I'm like, yo, yeah, no. And I thought the all the things he was about to say or did end up saying, I was like, wait, what? They said this. And we're all, oh, what? wait, what? And he was like, boom, 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 on it. Yeah, I mean, that character is definitely like a stand-in for the audience, I feel like, because, mm-hmm. you know, the situation that they're in is one that you would be in total disbelief about, you know? Um, of they would just be a a completely terrifying situation and your mind would be doing everything it could to come up with rationalizations and you know what not to try and figure out what's actually happening um i feel like the film up until maybe halfway through was uh, it seemed like it could be an ambiguous type of movie but then at that point like things definitely get more solidified and you're like oh no this is definitely what's going on like i know for sure that this is the case and i always like when movies are a little more ambiguous yeah. but i mean i don't know i don't know if that's a complaint or anything it's just you know halfway through the film i was like all ambiguity was lost for me oh sure i mean i went in expecting it to be this so Unless something in the film changed my mind, I knew that this was the way the film was going to go from the minute we Mm. walked in. I was just like, nah, this is the way it's going to go. And nothing in the film ever changed my mind on that. Mm. So the ambiguity, if it was there, it was lost on me because I already had, I was so sure Mm -hmm. and I was right walking in and walking out that the film just kind of and the film is very like rinse lather repeat too Mm. like in how it goes and we'll talk about that uh, in the more spoiler discussion which doesn't have to be very long but um and also um i think i think what's the most fascinating and probably the biggest strength of this film is that of all the like thrillers and 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 horror movies like we'll call it like a home invasion or kidnapping or or hostage film this is this is one of very few where the villains are not only portrayed as sympathetic but are also portrayed as not villainous yeah that right? was very interesting and that for sure that's the biggest highlight of the film for me is that you know and this is very very obvious in the film like Mm -hmm. you know they are not happy to be there no and you get that from the literal like very beginning of the film yes Uh, I thought that was really cool it's definitely and it's not even like sympathetic and like oh like they you know they were traumatized or whatever like you know it's not that kind of sympathetic character it's like you're really like Oh, they're just, I see. That's just like, they don't want to be here at all and do this at all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think if you're a fan of like Twilight Zone-esque stuff and a Shyamalan, which they go hand in hand, of course. Um, and you saw the trailer and, and you felt like it was um, something that you'd be into. It's definitely a recommendation. I mm-hmm. just don't want anyone to go into this expecting some massive twist and that like oh the trailer was just like a misdirect and like Mm -hmm. the movie's gonna be much bigger and and there's gonna be so much more going on not really i mean the film is very straightforward and the trailer you can pretty much get most of it out of and you're just gonna like go for the meat of it like you're getting a condensed version of it in the trailer yeah and then you just kind of get like a little more out of it with an ending tacked on that I could have guessed. So that's it. I mean, I don't know if that's a glowing review or anything on my behalf, but she liked it more than I did. I Well, and I didn't have any, I like, it. I didn't go in didn't thinking I knew what was going to happen. And, you know, the ending wasn't something that I, I would say that I expected. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, I, and that's just it, right? Like, this film can be hurt by just the fact that I walked in with preconceived notions. Yes. And yeah. all of them were, were met. Sure. Where yeah, I was just like, yeah, you know, this is going to be like or... this and this yeah. is going to happen and this is going to happen and this is how it's going to end. And it's exactly what happened. So I'm not really sure why I thought all that stuff. It's just yeah. what I got from the trailer. Yeah. And so I went in like, oh, I hope I'm wrong. I hope there's more to it than that. Nope. Yeah. 
So I don't know. That's that's maybe you'll have a different experience because you're not me, right? <laughs> right. And that's the truth of literally any freaking movie <laughs> in the history of film. I mean, All right. I think it's a recommendation for sure, though. Yeah. 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 If you like Shyamalan, you should go check it out. Um, all right. So spoilers really quick and, and we'll move on. Um, as far as like the little girl, like I get it. She brings like life into the world and, mm -hmm. and she's something to fight for and, and she, you know, but right. like, she's like the hope and Batista is this second grade teacher mm -hmm. and he shows them all the pictures of these kids. Right. And we also have one of the girls who claims she has a child and you know, they have their memories and, and like, I, I like this idea of like, one of you has to sacrifice the other one in order to, cause, cause if you remember, I was, I was writing and talking about that script that I, that I was working on in my head primarily about the alien invasion where they come and they're going to wipe out earth and they, they like mm -hmm. say, you guys have you know, X amount of hours or days or whatever to plead your case on why you shouldn't be wiped off the face of the earth. You know, we need, you're going to, we're going to give you a lawyer, right? A mm -hmm. human lawyer of our choosing. And he's going to, and he's going to have to plead your case to, to uh, save humanity. And they pick like the most jaded, yeah. like <laughs> hurt man that they can who's a lawyer who just lost his family was murdered he fucking hates the human race right he hates everything and it and it's him having to see the beauty in mankind mm -hmm. um in order to save us all in order you know to to find forgiveness in humanity which has failed him and robbed him of everything he's loved right and 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 putting him giving it you know kind of passing uh the responsibility of protecting us all as somebody who hates us all. Um, I really loved that idea when I had, when I'd come up with it years ago. And this kind of reminded me of that with, um, you know, what was his name? It's Andrew, I think. Oh yeah. We're Eric's terrible with names. One... We've talked about it. It's Eric and Andrew. I'm pretty sure. And I Eric think... and Andrew. Isn't that like a TV series? No, I don't know. Or isn't what's that uh... show called? Eric and Andre. Yeah, Eric and Andre, that's a show. <laughs> 100 percent that's um, a show. Anyway. Eric, Eric Andre, you mean? No, I'm no, I was it. Wait, I'm telling you there's a show called that. I don't watch <laughs> Eric it. Eric and Andre? No, I'm telling you something like that. Maybe you're right. God Eric damn it. <laughs> Whatever. Now I just look like an idiot. I don't watch comedies. I, I swear I just heard a title like that. <laughs> I think that's what you mean. Um I, anyway, I think Andrew is the one that's the attorney, the human rights attorney. Mm -hmm. And yeah, he is super bitter and jaded. And, you know, all of his experiences, like in the flashbacks, you know, not all of them, of course, but you see that his life is really laced with prejudice, you know, against him and discrimination. You know, he has the family who is not accepting of his, <laughs> of his partner. And, you know, when they're out, of course, he is does have a temper so but at the same time like you know when people are being assholes to you you're standing up for yourself you know but he's getting kind of the the brute force of the discrimination i feel like when, when we see these flashbacks yeah. and his partner is much more empathetic and kind and willing to kind of look past people's faults um and he's of course raised by the parents that are more loving and accepting of who he is and it is a really interesting scenario because if both of them had been very bitter, then, you know, humanity would have been screwed. But because they balance each other out and because you have the one that is like, no, we need to sacrifice our love, even though it's like the only thing that matters to us. And it's something that the world, you know, mostly rejects. Like we're still going to sacrifice it for everybody else and for our daughter, which I think is important because, you know, if they don't have her, then they're even though they're saying everybody else is gonna die like they don't really have like who cares but that would make who it cares an even tougher choice because you're sacrificing the one thing you love you're sacrificing the one thing that brings you any joy in this world anymore to save a bunch of people that you don't know and that you don't care about and for all intents and purposes in his experience hate him you know and 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 reject him Right, and he has to make that sacrifice to be alone. 
so that everyone else can be together. I mean, sure, that would right? be a harder decision. So to me, decision, that's a but... harder decision and, 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 and asks more from the character. Yeah, I mean, it... it so the daughter is like this does. silver lining to like, well, at least you got her. And and at no but point... See, like, the daughter is only there mm-hmm. for, like, this added incentive of, like, go off and have a beautiful life together and this and that. And there's this happiness to him. So she's never, ever, for one millisecond, even on the auction block. As she wouldn't be. Don't no. get me wrong. But, you know, they have these three people like it's going to be one of the three. And it's like, of course, it's only going to be one of the two. And then I just, I'm a, I'm a much bigger fan because this story has been told much, much better in a much different way, but in our favorite video game, right? Sure. This the story, this is exactly mm-hmm. the same concept of would you sacrifice the one person you love to ultimately save humanity, right? This and is... The Last of Us does this a trillion times better. Well, this is a much more hopeful message. The Last of Us is much more. Uh, <laughs> we can't say not, anything, well, so anyway, I, I'm not going to spoil this anything. This one, but. this movie, it, it does have hope, and that is what she represents. And she represents innocence and people who, you know, are, like children don't have the sins of anybody yet, right? Like they are our future; they're everything to us. So I think it makes sense for her to be there. But I, you know, her not feeling like she was in danger at all does kind of make her feel very much like a plot device. Yeah. And it's okay. I mean, like, I'm not upset by it. Like, in a, I don't think that it totally ruined the movie or anything kind of yeah. a way. Yeah. But um, I just think that the message was supposed to be one of hope and of, like, you know, we have to be able to look past... Like, there's a lot of shitty people in the world and a lot of shitty parts to humanity. But for all those shitty people, there's also so much beauty and so many kind people and wonderful people. And, like, that's kind of what you have to focus on as far as saving, you know, if you had to make that decision. Yeah. Um, But I would have, you know, I think that obviously the horror of this is in the apocalypse and in the decision that they have to make. But if she had been more at risk in some way... Uh, which it just would have made the film totally different though, because none of the people that are there, you know, the four horsemen don't want, aside, aside from Ronald Weasley, (laughs) all of them don't want to actually hurt any of the family. You know, they don't want to be there. So there's no real way to put her into a danger zone because they're not going to hurt her and their, her parents aren't going to hurt her. So, yeah. like, unless they were going to be like, if you don't make the decision, then we're going to kill you or something like that. And that totally changes everything, right? Because it's just like, okay, we're not going to make a decision and then you kill us. Like, you know. Yeah. I don't know. I I mean, it's fine that she's there. I just think it would have been much darker. And I, I guess I'm darker. always the darker guy mm-hmm. because as I told you, my ideal ending and what I thought oh, was yeah. going to happen, yeah. hopefully, but I knew it wasn't. I had like a 0.01% chance it was going to happen because this would just be too dark for the audience <laughs> and they would just be like, hate the film because of this. But my, if they gave me this, me this film and were like, here, you can write the ending, I would have definitely had... The two guys, you know, ultimately not be able to make a decision of who could kill who, right? Because they're kind of fighting over it. It's like, no, I want you to die. I want you to kill me. Blah, blah, blah. Like, I want me to die. I don't want you to die. And I thought they were, they were going to go back and forth. And I was like, oh, wouldn't this be great if they wait too long <laughs> and they end up like waiting and then shooting each other Mm -hmm. right if they both had guns or something or one had a knife or something and you you know they they killed one another and then you know we find out like it's too late Mm -hmm. and the little girl has to roam the earth alone yes that would have been super dark as as like the freaking you know apocalypse hits all around her yeah i mean that would have (laughs) been a crazy ending for sure yeah uh, so. I'm an asshole. I <laughs> probably shouldn't have been that ending, but well, it's just this. I mean, yeah, it has a hopeful message, you know. It's I just, like, I don't know. I just save humanity. I just wanted something more out of the film, I get, and I was I like, man, it. if yeah. it went that dark, it. if it went for like that missed ending, mm-hmm. where you're like, fuck, like you leave the theater like, 
<laughs> just <bummed. laughs> just a little girl wandering around a desolate wasteland. I get it. Hope for nothing. humanity. I mean, it would like, have been I, I a powerful it. ending too, because then it's like, even though you they tried to, in the end, like it was too little, too late. Hmm. You know, which is definitely there's a lot of stuff in the world that people do too little, too late that it has a huge impact on the planet. So it could have worked, but. Instead, they, we got the happy ending. <laughs> Happier ending. There's still a ton of people that died. All those people on the beach. That's all the tidal oh wave coming God. towards them. See, I don't understand. I mean, I get it. It's a movie and they were just like, huh? But if you were standing on a beach. Oh, hell And no. you saw a wave. Everyone would have been running. Oh, my God. Like, the instant. And even then, it's still too late. Although, I don't know. Morons today, they'd probably be sitting with their Dude. phone like, I'm going to get <laughs> so many clicks for this. So many clicks. So many likes. <laughs> um, I mean, I felt, I felt bad for everybody. I did too. I really felt bad for the villains of the film. I mean, oh the villain of the movie is God. Well, yeah. Right? Like, that's the villain. It's like, like once again, God <laughs> comes down and leaves the most cryptic ass shit. Yeah. That would make anyone question whether or not there's validity in the thing that he sent. It's Absolutely. like, God, can you not, can you, <laughs> can you not give us a clearer like message and more proof? Like, is that not fucking possible? <laughs> is it asking too much oh to just God. ask for better proof and not insanely cryptic He's messages like, no, no. that are like <laughs> literally have thousands of different interpretations like, of it. I'm just going to send you visions and like maybe you can figure out what that means. Dude, God is <laughs> God is just a dick in this yeah. movie. Yeah, I definitely yeah I felt bad for all of them. Um, even the asshole, like I you know he's homophobic and a dick, but like when he's just like I'm so scared, you know like, and they all believe you know even though they have a couple moments where they're a little doubtful just because they don't want to believe, like they're like maybe we don't have to do this. Like they all a hundred percent really believe you know that they, that this has to be done and of course it does but yeah, batista's character leonard was like i just felt so bad for him oh my god yeah, like terrible. oh my he was so sweet and he like loves children and he kept trying to like connect with Wen and like it's just awful like it's such a horrible situation and just going there knowing like they're not gonna choose to kill each other so we all have to die and not only are we dying but we're unleashing plagues upon the rest of the planet and killing hundreds of thousands of people. It's such like, a it's such a little bitch way to do things. Yes. I mean Like God is a fucking <laughs> asshole in this movie. Like what a fucking asshole. To seriously <laughs> put the entire fate of humanity into two random fucking guys in a cabin. Like every one of us, seven billion, yeah. eight p- billion people are gonna be judged. Based on their love. And Based like, on but it's fucking, like, like how what, strong who is knows? their love for each other? They're fucking psychopaths. They could yeah. fucking be like, good, I want to watch humanity die. Yeah. Like, you're really just going to put it on two random assholes in the middle of a fucking cabin? Like, what? Yeah. This is craziness. Like, this is bullshit. <laughs> is yes. it, that kind of stuff is outrageous to me. Like, don't get me started. I, I'm just <laughs> saying, like, the whole, like, biblical fucking this and that. It, God is always way too myopic and way too like small minded. The problem with the problem with religion has always been for me is that God is way too human. And this is because, Maybe because humans by wrote humans. him. And this is <laughs> exactly why <laughs> his message is so like human. And yeah. like I'm jealous and all of this. And it's yeah. like an omnipotent being no. who created the cosmos is jealous of that's literally what? yeah of fucking what right there's just we have such basic concepts of our you know our limitations of our feeble brains and we tried to pretend that we could understand some being beyond comprehension and and put it into like you know a tight little neat book a rule book <laughs> and it's like this is bro, why stop that's... just stop <laughs> maybe there's a god but you don't fucking have any concept of how he operates. 
or uh, she or this it is or why whatever. I really like that song by Bo Burnham, God's Perspective, because it's a very satirical look at like these yeah, arbitrary. Like why the meaningless... fuck would I care? Yes. yes. And it's so like are you jerking off? Like Yeah. What do I give a shit? It's a great song and it's actually like very heartfelt, so I enjoy it, but yeah, fuck God in this enough, movie. <laughs> so. Enough God and religious harping. I know we're not religious people, but <laughs> I mean, it, this kind of stuff just drives me nuts. Like, but in this really? movie, That's though, this like for once, it wasn't just like crazy people being like, the end of the world is coming. Like the, it actually was coming. Oh, sure. They so, were right. That sucks. <laughs> but I always figured they were right. Yeah. Even from the trailer, I was like, 100% they're right. I didn't. I thought maybe, <laughs> I, I, maybe there was this off chance that it was going to be some twist that they were, that they were like lying and, and piping in the, the video, th- you know, mm-hmm. out from the outside and whatever, so, trying you know, to get him. But then committing suicide be... and also being like, you know, um, a, the guy asking all the right questions was why I knew it was, was true. Yeah. You know what I thought it was going to be because of the opening with her collecting the grasshoppers and she was like, I'm not going to hurt you. I just want to like learn from you and study you a little bit. And I was like, oh, what if this is like because aliens in that, in that, that are instance, like studying. She's God in that instance. Right. Right. And, and the grasshoppers yeah. inside. And, and, and then, so I thought it was going to be. And then they be... flip that uh-huh. for when they're trapped inside right. the house and there's grasshoppers on the windows looking in on them. Yeah. Right. So, but I thought maybe it was going to be like a, like, yeah, like I said, aliens or <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> some, some something like kind of trying to study how people would react in that situation but and what's that the difference? was not the case um that there was consequences to their decisions like but there's large okay. scale consequences versus like you know it's a mind game and we're just trying to make you think that it's happening mm, okay. just to see how you'd okay. react yeah sure so well that's it that's it knock at the cabin knock 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 uh yeah so let us know what you thought. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, bye. bye.